SuccessfulBlackWomen.com. I'm here with my good friend Patrice Johnson and co-host. How are you doing today, Patrice? I'm doing wonderful, Norma. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And of course, this is your Black Women, where Black women keep it real. Uh, So a fun topic uh, here. Uh, Yesterday, I saw one of um, my favorite, I really don't like saying friends, but I guess that's what we call them, Facebook friends, um, said something about, you know, these ugly, dusty men who are broke are constantly complaining that no woman wants to be with them. And I kind of uh, picked up on why is she mentioning how he looks, that he's ugly looking and I posted on my own wall. I was like, guys, what is it? Why, why, should we, why should a woman be concerned about how a man looks in terms of deciding whether she wants to be with him or not? Um, so I'll ask you that question. Should, you know, should a woman care about a man's looks uh, when she's considering a future with him? Well, I mean, I definitely think that looking good plays a, plays a major part in the sexual aspect. Um, because I have to be I don't have to be attracted, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, if a man treats me well, I can normally get over the fact that he may not be as attractive as I want him to be because his personality turns me on just enough. Okay, so for you, it it plays a part, but it's not the main part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of people then uh, answered and said that, well, you know, genetics, you have you can't have ugly babies. Um, which again to me then makes me wonder what are they finding as ugly um, but um, then the other thing was people say well you know there's the attraction mm-hmm. element if you're not attracted to a person why would you want to be with them um, and one of the things that I pointed out was you know men generally are more visually stimulated than women um, so for men whether anybody likes to admit it or not how a woman looks if she's appealing is a very important thing for them or to them. Um, But I don't think it's the same thing with women. And, you know, I'm always emphasizing that men and women are not the same, you know, because a lot of people even said, well, for the same reason that a man would want a a pretty girl, you know, Mm -hmm. or a pretty woman, because he wants to be sexually attracted to her. But the thing is, we can't use the same measuring sticks um, Mm -hmm. as men and women, because men and women are not the same. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess the question then should be, um, if, if we're asking should a man looks matter if a woman loves him, we're asking it from the female's perspective. My answer is, is that it really doesn't. Um, when we were talking uh, before we started recording, I was like, well, you know, when I met my husband, um, he was strong and muscular and he was very attractive. But honestly, that wasn't what made me think, um, you know, I want to marry this guy because uh, there were a lot of attractive men around. Um, so it wasn't really the thing that made me think, wow, I want to marry this guy. Um, I always have said it before to him and to um, several people. One of the things that caught my attention about him was that um, I have a stepdaughter. So he um, was telling me about his daughter. And at the time, she was very little. I think she was like three or four years old. And um, his whole face lit up. And I just saw a really gentle side of him. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, my daughter. And he was talking about her. And I thought to myself, wow, this guy would make an amazing father. The way that he's so invested and the way his God comes down when he talks about his daughter. Wow, he would probably make a really great dad. And that's how he piqued my interest. Um, so it wasn't really about how, you know, good looking and what all this other stuff was. And it turns out I was right. You know, we have four kids now together. Um, and he's an amazing dad. So that was a good instinct. Um, so other than just looks, what do you think? Um, you know, you're in your 20s, which is, uh, in my opinion, no pressure, the time when you're kind of really starting to think about whether you want uh, to get into a long-term relationship that turns into marriage. And um, you have to start thinking about those things. Like, what am I looking for? What am I interested in, in terms of a, a, a lifetime partner? So what is, what is it? Because I'm very curious. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'll say what interests me is a man's intellect. Mm-hmm. Because you have to be able to have good, thought-provoking conversation. You have to. If you can't make me think, if you can't, if, if you can't make me 
if you can't keep me on my toes and there's really sometimes I have to wonder what are you here for and I think the same thing should come from women um, basically what I'm going to say everything that I want is the same thing that I want to be able to give another person so I want people to understand this isn't just me expecting this out of a man and I don't have to do anything I have my work to do as well mm-hmm. I want a man who is intelligent I want a man who elevates my life in every aspect communication sexually mentally emotionally physically I want someone who can elevate my life but I want to be able to do that for them too I want someone who accepts me for who I am but I want to be able to accept them for who they are and for the changes that may take place take place you know well well down the line because I think a lot of times when you see younger people who get married in their 20s which in reality no a lot of people really aren't ready for that that is that's a that's a special circumstance um but when people do get married in their 20s, they're not thinking about 20 years later when their husband or their wife does not look the same, when their personalities have changed, when things have happened, and now all of a sudden they're ready for a divorce. And even some people get married in their 20s and they're ready for a divorce in their 30s because they were not thinking about the long term. So I want someone who, who grabs my heart in a way where no matter how different they look 20 years from now, no matter how different the circumstance is 20 years from now, I still love that person because of their heart. Right. I think ultimately what matters are the matters of the heart. Now, finances, that plays a part in it. Sex plays a part in it. We're not going to act like those things don't exist because if a woman says money don't matter, you will lie because you wouldn't be with a man who didn't have any. You wouldn't be with a man who doesn't work. I definitely want a man who works hard for his money and who brings plenty of it in but I think it's also my job to bring plenty of that as well right yeah um so great point um you know um I I like what you said about intellect um because I I you know I've had a lot of time to really clarify um as I've gotten older what it really is it, it takes to it takes for a man to be successful as a husband and as a father and just as a person in general um, and one of the things that I think you said, which was important, was you talked about his intellect, because um, you can call me old school if you like, but I do believe that it is the primary responsibility of a man to protect and to provide. <clears throat> and then above and beyond that, he needs to be able to please his wife, um, take that as you will in many different ways. Um, and then also he has to be able to lead and it takes a great deal of maturity and intellect to be able to take on that role. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people are not very sober when they um, make commitments. Uh, And it's important to be sober, to understand that, you know, I I went through that lovey-dovey phase in the first couple of years of marriage where it's like, oh, yay, you're in love and all this other stuff. But I still understood that that was going to kind of die down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And ideally, when it dies I don't want to say it dies out. It actually changes to something that has more depth. Um, And that's important too. But I think it's very important to to understand that there needs to be some soberness um, to the person who's making the decision because our feelings do get us carried away, man. You know, you just feel like you can't make it without this person and you want to marry them because you feel like, oh, I can't breathe without her. I can't breathe without him or whatever it is. And I don't think that people should devalue how, how powerful that feeling can be because people decide just off of that feeling to spend the rest of their lives with other people. Yes. But the problem is then they don't consider anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and now knowing what I know, I would say that it's very, very important to have that soberness. Um, and as a woman, I think that it's important to, 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 to really take note of a man and if he has the capacity to be responsible, ultimately responsible, and to lead. Um, because I don't care... Uh, if people say I'm old-fashioned or what have you, but I grew up with a strong father who was a leader, Um, and uh, it has taught me the importance of leadership and how things go when you have a strong leader. Um, And my mother, you know, bless her, she did a really good job of helping everybody in that environment understand that my dad was the last stop, that what he said was what goes, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and and, and that did a lot for shaping us as people. We have a, 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 respect, a respect for authority. 
um, we have a respect for leadership, and we have an understanding of what it means to have um, harmony, stability, um, and good family values. So I think uh, it's very, very important to be sober because when you're thinking about how you know your your heart flutters when you see somebody, you're not really thinking about um, much uh, much else than just that feeling, and you just want to be with them and just be together and all this other stuff. It doesn't give you that um, th that chance if you get carried away with it to start to measure in a very sober way. Will this person? Um, be able to, to, to protect, to provide, to lead. When there's a crisis, what will they do? Um, when they're having a bad day, what will they do? When things go horribly wrong, what will they do? Those are things that you have to think about. Um, and when you haven't thought about those things, when those things happen, it falls apart and everybody goes their separate ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so a question for you, um, let's get more specific. What should a guy um, kind of look for in a woman? I guess we're guessing here because we're both women, but right. I have some ideas, but I'll let you. Well, I think one I think one thing that men should look for in a woman is a woman who is not always trying to be like a man. Because nothing drives me crazier than when I see a girl who's always trying to outdo her boyfriend or always trying to outdo her husband. And I'm just like, it's not about who can outdo each other. It's about how well the two of you can work together because you're a team. You don't right. see basketball players on the basketball court the Celtics versus the Bulls you don't see the Celtics playing against each other or the Bulls playing against each other they're a team so right. they are playing the Celtics against the Bulls not the Celtics against against the Celtics you know <laughs> so I think a lot of times when I see women who try to outdo their boyfriends or their husbands I've learned in relationships that that is just not healthy it's not healthy because you're always competitive you're always competing against one another and that is what can bring about a lot of arguments that can bring about a lot of disagreements because the physical turns into verbal and the verbal turns into mental and then somebody's feelings gets hurt gets hurt and everybody's ready to call it quits so <laughs> i think it's just about being teammates it's about being partners have your partners back just like you want your partner to have your back but stop trying to I stop trying to outdo everybody um, and actually, you know, I was, I've been exposed to, um, you know, this woman who's, a lot of people find her very controversial, but when I really honed in and listened to a lot of the things that she said, they rang very true. Her name is uh, Ro Elori Kutno, and she wrote a book called Man Leads. And in the book, she really talks about how she researched different cultures and how marriage and relationships work in different cultures. And she was very specific about men. Uh, roles and what they look for in women and what works and then women uh, and what works and so forth. And one of the things that she said that really stuck out to me was she said that um, this sense of competition is actually a very masculine thing, but we're seeing a lot of women um, becoming very masculine or exhibiting very masculine traits. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it logically, if you're a man, a heterosexual man who desires peace, harmony, and building a family with somebody, are you going to go out looking for another man? No, of course not. <laughs> for a woman who acts like a woman and, um, and understands what it means to be a woman uh, and doesn't try to compete with you to be a man any more than you would compete with her to be a woman. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very interesting that you would bring up that whole competition thing because what we, um, what I find again in the society is I think that a lot of times people try to create confusion again around genders. Um, even though I sometimes say I, I, I feel like I'm old school, I do understand that we're living in modern times where there's more flexibility, you know, about um, what men can do and what women can do, but I still think it's important for us as women to embrace being women and for men to stay in their corner as well and be men. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually when relationships have been researched to work better, is when men just understand what being a man is and they you know, play that role, and women understand being a woman and play that role. Um, but for my part, I think that one of the things that, um, Again, knowing what I know now, I think that is important, and this goes both ways, um, for women to be very family-oriented. Um, because one of the things that I find with relationships nowadays is they're very individualistic, which is why it's easy for people to get angry and storm out. Because well, everybody's all everybody's looking out for themselves. Yeah, it's just about me. You know, you made me mad, so I'm, I'm out. You know, but when you're thinking holistically, um, and you're thinking about the fact that you're trying to build something that's going to uh, last this generation, the next, and so on. 
um, and you're trying to create a pattern, and that's very important, you're trying to create a pattern of building, um, you want to build, okay? So if you decide that every time you get pissed off, you can storm out, you're actually creating a pattern. You storm out, you leave your partner. Uh, if you've had any kids, that's going to be how they respond to conflict as well, storm out. And everything just keeps falling apart over generations. So you have to build a pattern where um, conflict resolution um, is an important skill to have, and that is demonstrated and modeled. And you can't do that until, unless you're family oriented and you have to understand that, no, you don't sacrifice yourself and become a doormat and all this other stuff, but you do have to be a person who thinks about more than just themselves and what they're thinking about in that given moment, mm -hmm. um, which goes into commitment. You know, you have to honor your commitments and you have to understand that you can't be with a person who doesn't have a history or an understanding of what a commitment means. A commitment is you, you get in with a feeling that you want to be in, but understanding that there may be a feeling that you don't want to be in, but you stay in anyway, because that's what commitment is. Uh, because if you only go in and then leave when you don't feel like it, that's not a commitment. Right. That's just a, um, I'm going to do it until I don't feel like it, and then I'm leaving. It's just kind of like, even if you had a job, people seem to understand it with a job. Um, most heart attacks uh, I've heard happen on Monday morning, and that's because they just don't want to go there. They don't want to go to work, but they're going anyway, and they're really forcing themselves. Mm -hmm. So these negative toxic feelings are around that feeling of, I have to go to this place. But that's because you made a commitment. You said you would be there, so you got to be there, even when the feeling of wanting to be there is not there. Right. Now, hopefully you'd want to be there more than you don't want to be there. But again, you can't really grasp that until you understand that commit. That's what commitment means. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, should I go on? <laughs> um, the last thing that I um, that came to my mind was um, uh, thinking about compassion and genuinely being a good person. Um, you know, I've said it before, like sometimes when I'm on, so and I'm on social media a lot. Um, I'm on social media, I find people are very, very unpleasant. Um, and I have to constantly be like, hey, look, be respectful to other people, okay? Be nice, okay? Don't be rude and all this other stuff. Um, but again, that's an epidemic thing where people are just unpleasant. Can you imagine being locked up in a house with an unpleasant person? That's horrible. You want it? I mean, I want to, you know, off myself, really. I mean, I'm joking, but really, can you imagine being stuck somewhere with a, an unpleasant person who has uh, who, who has no idea what it means to care about other people and how they feel and what they're going through. And they're all about themselves and they're just unpleasant. Um, so I think people sometimes miss that. And, and actually people tell you if they're pleasant or unpleasant very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, because you'll see them being nice to you because they have those lovey-dovey feelings to you. But you have to look at how they uh, treat other people around them, how they talk about other people, um, how they um, respond to other people's pain. They tell you very quickly. There'll be people who just laugh at other people or they're not even thinking about other people. And that tells you that that's a person who lacks compassion. Um, or if somebody um, does something they don't like, do they immediately launch an attack? Or do they stop to think about the fact that maybe they don't see things the same way as that person? There's a lot of opportunities to see if, if a person is genuinely just a good person who cares about other people. Or they just care about you right now because they have those lovey-dovey feelings. But guess what? What, what happens when those lovey-dovey feelings go away? Then the real person emerges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I definitely think that what you said about social media, I guess we can kind of tie um, this into what we had talked about previously about social media and reality TV and how that has a profound effect on people's everyday life now because they think that that's real life. Um, right. I saw a meme on Instagram and it was uh and basically now instagram they do where you can do a slideshow and right. they saw the picture and it said uh i want a man who's gonna keep me in my place and i think it was like a guy uh 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 yelling at a girl's uh, yelling in a girl's face and he had his hand out like this and mm -hmm. then it showed a video of a girl and her boyfriend getting into an argument and he was literally screaming with his fist ball in her face and then it showed another clip of Stevie J and Jocelyn Hernandez from Love and Hip Hop kind of going at it. And I think that the perception that people have is very unrealistic in the sense that they think that that's what makes a real relationship. I don't want to be with a man who yells in my face. I don't want a man. I don't want a man who wants me to yell in his face. I don't think that that's the way that 
a woman is supposed to treat her man. And I don't think that that's the way that a man is supposed to treat his woman. So I think that we have to kind of eliminate this, this idea of social media being the social aspect of our life because it's very different in reality and not and I don't mean reality as in reality TV because we all know that that's scripted that's crap but just because you see two famous people going at it and arguing and having a fight that doesn't mean that that's what your life is supposed to be like you need to be with somebody who supports you you need to be with somebody who's cheering you on it in, in, in every moment no matter what you do whether it's just you carrying the bags from the car to the house you need somebody who is always going to be supportive versus yelling in your face. Right. So if that's what you look for, then you won't find love. You will find a catastrophe. Right. <laughs> but it won't be it's love. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up because I think that um, people have started to normalize dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to say, when I was younger, I kind of fell into that trap because I thought that if things were quiet, it was boring. Um, and actually I love boring now. <laughs> I'll take boring any day if that's what we're calling it. Mm-hmm. Um, where there's peace and there's harmony, um, and people are being lo- loving and gentle and kind to each other. Um, but it's, it's interesting that you brought that up because a lot of people will say that if, um, you know, somebody's not yelling at them or whatever it is, then it means that they're not really, um, they don't really care or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really important to, to point out that that is dysfunction. That is dysfunction. And that's why I keep saying across social media, you find people who are just mean and nasty and they think that that's normal and it's not. Um, and again, like I said, I often, I've, I've started to kind of unfollow and block very liberally um, or tell people that, look, you, you, no, no, not here. You can't do that here. Um, and some people are actually surprised, like, <laughs> LOL, what does that mean? Uh, no, it means that there's an expectation that you won't be mean, nasty, rude, disrespectful, and expect me to tolerate it. And the thing about it is these are people who then go tie their lives to other people and then act shocked um, that they're not tolerating that. Right. That's why I think it's important. I hear it a lot. And yes, it's true. A person does have to accept you for who you are. Uh, but sometimes people, when they say accept me for who my, I am, they mean all that nasty behavior. And they didn't, um, they were not born with that behavior. They learned it. And before they get into a mature relationship, they have to unlearn that rubbish and start learning, like, and start learning to be a good person. I mean, my goodness, is that too much to ask for? Just be a good person. Be kind, be gentle, be nourishing. Um, be compliant, uh, not even compliant, but cooperative. Mm-hmm. Um, don't argue about, don't argue with everything. You can just, you can go to your job and your boss tells you what to do and you understand that he's the boss and you're the employee. So you do what he says or she says, because that's what's happening right then. And that's what's most conducive, even though you don't agree with all of it. Mm-hmm. go ahead and do it and maybe later you'll say i think maybe we should do this differently or whatever it is and that goes both ways that's cooperation mm-hmm. um, and that's important and i just don't understand why we live in this age of arguing all the time getting in people's faces being mean and nasty and well i had to let i had to let him know what i was no you didn't you could have shut up you don't, to, <laughs> you don't have to let people know how you feel all the time some of it you could just not say right. you know um, but it's a, I think it's important to say those things because it's getting, I feel like it's getting out of control. I see too much where it's really unpleasant. And then people are like, oh, you know what? There's 50% of divorce. Well, of course. Who would put up with that, all the stuff that goes on? Who would? I wouldn't, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, I think, it, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. It's just about being a nice person, trying to be a good person, trying to be a better person every day. Um, but I will say to close this out. My name is Patrice Johnson, also known as Naturally Trees. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Naturally Trees.